Why, hello again. My name is Todd. Hi, and I'm his daughter, Victoria. Now, in our very first video, I had mentioned that I'm a licensed cosmetologist for the past 26 years now. Yeah, and I've been a licensed cosmetologist for 15 years now. Wow. But one thing that we had not mentioned was the fact that one of our favorite things to do is to work with color. I, or we, love color. Uh, mm. We are truly colorists. Yeah, I know what you mean. I absolutely love working with color. I would say it's probably my favorite thing to do. Now, when we mentioned color, what's probably coming into your mind is you're thinking about hair color. And yes, that is true. We are hair colors. We're specialists. But what we're talking about today is making custom-made lipsticks. And that is something that we have done for the past 15 years for our clients. Yeah, I know. And I absolutely love it. I remember when we used to do it back in the salon in the States, we had so much fun creating the lipsticks together. And not only that, but sometimes our clients would get involved and they'd help make the lipsticks too. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes they'd even help us name the color. Uh, and I know they enjoyed that just as much as we did. It was so much fun. It was a ton of fun. And I've always said, there's a lipstick color for every woman out there. From those who are used to wearing just a lip balm to those who like wearing a nice, strong, bold lipstick. And that would be me. <laughs> <laughs> there's a couple of things that you need to keep in mind when choosing a lipstick. One is the skin tone that you have. And secondly is your personality. Exactly. Very good point. And you know, actually the color that I have on right now is one that you and I made together, I think oh. probably last year, but it's the Mia Moore. Remember that one? Uh, and yeah. I okay. absolutely love it because it's so creamy, but even though it's creamy, I just have to put it on in the morning and it lasts all day. It's wonderful. I absolutely love it. That's good to know. Awesome. Now, for those of you who are afraid of lip color, not like Victoria, but those of you who are afraid of lip color, <laughs> There's a couple things that you should know or that would help you. First of all, look at your natural lip tone. So everyone has a natural pigment to their lips. It could be a light pink, a medium pink. Uh, it could be a darker pink or a mauve tone, which is a pink with a purple undertone. Or you could have more of a violet tone to your lips and also a coral, a coral tone to your lips. This yeah. is important because if you choose a lipstick that is close to your natural pigment, you're not going to feel like you have this fake color on your lips and it'll feel more natural on you. Yeah, that's very important. Exactly. But you know, Victoria, remember, we also have those clients who have that natural dark pigment to their lips, but they don't want that heavy dark pigment either. Yeah, and true. One thing that we've done is we've made lipsticks that have that right pigment, that darker pigment, but make it a sheer lipstick so that it feels more natural on them. Yeah, not too overpowering. No, not at all. Yeah. But you know, Victoria, I think we've done enough talking for now. Uh, why don't we show our listeners how to make a lipstick? I agree. It sounds good. All right, let's get started. All right. Now, because of our situation in Sicily, we are under lockdown yet again. So Victoria yes. <laughs> cannot be here in person to help customize a lipstick uh, and make it hands-on with us. So she's going to stay virtually on the computer. And I today will have the privilege of mixing the lipstick for us. Yeah, we'll let you have all the fun today. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Little wardrobe change, as you can see, I had an apron put on, some gloves to keep everything nice and clean. And uh, the color that I've chose today, or I should say we chose, is called Mother Road Rose. And Victoria, uh, can you believe that we made it in 2005? That's when we made this no. lipstick. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. crazy. It's such a beautiful color. It, it really is. So this, uh, this base that the lipstick is made of is called a cream base, which holds, mm. it's up, able to hold more pigment. Uh, do you like the cream base, Victoria? I do, because like in the title, it's very creamy. But surprisingly, it actually wears really well for being a cream base. So you have the nice consistency, and um, but the pigment wears well. Okay, good. So let's start. Um, first of all, we have our pigments. We're going to have different pigments here. And we also have different frosts. So different colored frosts. This one is champagne. This one is called uh, garnet. And I have them all laid out here in front of us. This here is our lipstick mold. 
So when I melt the product, I will put the product in here and this will give it its shape for the lipstick itself and then we will put it in a tube. Uh, one thing too, which I'm not going to show right now, is we also do lipstick wands. Uh, so we can make a lipstick in here and it's more of a sheer color or it could be just strictly a frost or even just a gloss. But let's get started with our, our uh, Mother Road Rose color. So it, call, okay. it calls for a wine berry. So uh, this is wine berry here. And we have here uh, a calibrator. So we're gonna use the measurements here um, to be able to make sure that I stick to the formula. So it's 0.5. Do you want me to read off the formula for you? Would that be easier? That would be great, Victoria. Thank you. Okay. So for the wine berry, you're going to do 0.50, and you're going to do that times two. So two times. All right. So two times the wine berry. Excellent. So that's done. What's next? We're going to do 0.125 of black. All right, 0.125 of black. Don't want too much of that. <laughs> no, right? <laughs> to be very careful with the black, it's very potent. Although I did have a client once ask for a black lipstick. That was fascinating to me. What's next? Yes, I remember that. <laughs> so you're going to do 0.25 of cocoa oh, and right. keep that out because we're going to be doing more of that. All right, so 0.25 of cocoa. And how many? One of that, and then you're gonna do 0 0.50 of cocoa. Okay. And then 0 0.50. So it's kind of neat though, when you're measuring these out, uh, to see um, the different pigments that are actually in a lipstick and to see how the lipstick comes together. It's, mm -hmm. I never get sick of it. It's just amazing to me. And then someone's gonna actually wear this. All right. Especially once you add the different frosts to it. It's amazing how much that changes the lipstick. True, true. What's next, Victoria? 0.25 of white. All right, so let me get the white. And that's our last pigment for this lipstick. All right, so 0.25 of the white. All right, I got it out, very Perfect. good. And I'm going to just mix these tones together like this. Hopefully you can see it in the video. And you can see how that lipstick color is coming together nicely. Okay, so it's looking good, Victoria. Nice. Okay, so what's next? All right, so now we're gonna add the frost, which is the fun part. <laughs> we really get to see the color change. So we're gonna start with the bronze frost and you're gonna need the teeny scoop. Okay. Teeny tiny scoop. The teeny. And how many of these? One of the tiny scoop of bronze. Okay. We got one in there. Perfect, so now you're gonna need the large scoop and it's gonna be of Sienna. And you're going to do three large scoops of sienna. This is what really makes it a really pretty color. So three large scoops of the sienna. Mm -hmm. So it's As one. you can see, that's a really pretty color. It really is. Two. I find this one adds life to the pigment, don't you think? Three. Oh, most definitely. Most definitely. All right, so we get our three large scoops of sienna. Perfect. So now you're going to go to crystal and you're going to need the small scoop. And you're going to do three small scoops of crystal. All right. So one, two, and this will be our third one. Perfect. All right, so now, once you're done with that, we're gonna move on, keep your small scoop out. We're gonna move on to opal, though. Okay, we have opal. Now, what does opal do, Victoria? 
Well, in the title, it gives it a nice opalescent color. <laughs> It's a good thing she's virtual and on a computer screen, <laughs> that's for sure. It's a nice safe distance, you know, 30 minutes away. Exactly. Okay, so you added the opal? I did. Should, I okay, probably should, so that's... excuse oh, me, sorry, I, I should probably um, soften the base in the microwave. I was just gonna suggest that, so perfect. And you're gonna do that for a little bit and then you're gonna need some additives while that's going. So the base um, are solid, as you can see. So for us to be able to mix it comfortably, we just want to soften it a little bit to be able to mix it in uh, with the dyes and the frost. So now I'm going to scoop it out. And as you can see, it's still a nice solid, but it's a workable solid. That's looking pretty good. Good. All right. So now I'm going to carefully try to mix some of this in. Without the powder going everywhere like confetti. <laughs> exactly. It's, what's amazing is the frost really changed the color dramatically. Um, you wouldn't think it would be because you would think that would be more of the pigment. But sometimes when the color is just not quite right, uh, we can add a frost to it to change the tone and then it makes the, the world a difference uh, for that lipstick. Mm. So true. And even with making a sheer lipstick, sometimes we just, just do frost and we don't even use a pigment. True, true. The only disadvantage of doing that is, like you were saying before, you love having a lipstick that lasts well. So yes. if it's a, a lipstick that's mostly frost, it doesn't have the stay power of one that has the pigment. Very true. How's it coming along? It's looking pretty good. I'm getting that mixed in. And what? It's a beautiful color, actually. I forgot how pretty this color is. Well, that's why we've kept it, even though it's, you know, <laughs> a few years old. <laughs> I know, right? What's our next thing, Victoria? What's on our... Well, um, we're going to start by adding the additives. So we're going to add moisture additive. Ah. And that will make a huge difference, because right now it looks a little chalky because of all of the frost in there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. moisture additive. We moisture. Have, so one whole yep. dropper. One whole dropper, yes. And let me add that. Very good. And then you're going to need the silkening modifier. And you're going to need six drops of that only. Because that's pretty potent stuff. <laughs> now, the nice thing about the silkening modifier... Well, first of all, let's talk about the moisturizing. The moisturizer does exactly that. It adds the moisture to the lipstick base that's... Um, and it just makes it feel that much more better on. The mm -hmm. silkening modifier, though, it really gives it that silky feeling on the lips. Um, so that it's very comfortable to wear um, for the client. Yes, but surprisingly, even though it's very moist and it, uh, it, it has the silkening modifier in it, it doesn't make it so that it bleeds on your lips or that it moves around, even though it's soft and creamy. True. All right, so this is looking good. Let's get our silkening modifier. And well, before I do that, I'm just going to wipe my hands, make sure I don't get anything on anything else. So the silkening modifier, we need six drops. Correct. All right. So we have our six drops there. All right. It's looking good. All right. And 
And then what next? Well, now we can actually put this in our little pot. And we could, now I'm going to put it in the microwave, melt it down so we can pour it. And then we're going to get the mold ready to be able to uh, take the lipstick and so it can solidify into the shape that we want it to be in. Perfect. So, make sure I get all those pigment that we want yes, in there. Yes, don't leave any behind. No. It's funny because if you do, it could change the tone or the lipstick itself, and so you might not get exactly the color that it was if you are not careful. Very true. So while that is melting and getting into a nice a creamy liquidy form, we're going to prep our, our um, mold now. And to do that, we're gonna open it up and we're going to put a little product in there called Lipstick Release. And we're just gonna put a little drop in there and then we will work it through. This helps so that the lipstick doesn't stick to the actual mold itself. Yeah, you want it to come out nice and clean. <laughs> exactly. All right, so now that we have, it's sort of like greasing a cake pan, you know? You don't want your cake to stick. Yeah, except for you're not using Crisco or Pam. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or butter. I'm just gonna check to see how we're doing here. And the lipstick is looking good. Perfect, looks like it's almost there, huh? Yeah, it actually is ready. Ah, perfect. So what I'm doing is I'm just stirring it to make sure there's no, it's evenly melted and ready to be poured. And as you can see, I'm just gonna pull this here and we're gonna pour right into the mold. Let's do one more. So what's really cool is that you will see the, uh, it, the lipstick cooling. So it takes about five minutes, but as it cools, it starts to sink in a little bit in the middle. So five minutes from now, and we will have a cool and ready to uh, lipstick to be able to put into a, a tube, just like this. Into the tube. Yeah, Very good. but even once it's in there, it won't be ready to use yet for a little bit. You need to let it set for a little while. True. So you can, um, it takes about two hours to, for the lipstick to set up, even once it's in its tube, before you can actually use it. Um, you don't want it to break. Um, so let me just see there. And the next um, lipstick, Victoria, is Odd Venice. And that's a different uh, base. One of my favorites. Okay. Is that the butter base? That's the butter base. Okay. But you know what I think we should do? Is I mm -hmm. think we should um, do that another time as well. Maybe. Okay. We'll do that and we can do the frost, the lip gloss one as well next time. Perfect. Yeah. At least this gives you an idea of how a lipstick is made and um, what, what we do and also what you could do. You could have your custom made lipstick. You could ask us to put different tones in or colors that you would really like. Um, or if you want a super frost or very sheer, it's really up to them what they would like to have Absolutely. in their lipstick. Yeah. So let's just check this and see how it's doing. And as we can see, it's already taking shape nicely. So I'm going to pull up one of our hollow tubes. It's a nice hollow tube, ready for the new lipstick. And what you're gonna do is you want to carefully put the lipstick over that. And you wanna make sure that it's nice and even. And why is that important? <laughs> because you don't want a crooked lipstick. Yeah, that, that is a kind of a problem, isn't it? So, voila. And there you have ah, your lipstick. It's so beautiful. So pretty. Mm -hmm. Came up very, very nice. Good job. And that's it.
Well, I hope you enjoyed our video today about learning how we go about making lipsticks, as well as learning what color works best for not only your skin tone, but also for your natural lip color. And if you'd like to contact us for either getting more information about today's video or also for possibly making your own custom made lipstick, what we can do is I'll put a link down below to our contact info so you can contact us directly with any questions. Exactly. And also too, if you have any suggestions or questions that you would like to have answered in our upcoming mm -hmm. videos, uh, please let us know in the comments section below. And Perfect. if you liked our video today, don't forget to hit the like button and don't, forget, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button on the bottom as well. So you will be notified when our next new video comes out as well. Well, I guess that's all for now. Ciao. Ciao. Ciao, ciao. Ciao.